I'm Kristen McKeon from Diderio Woodwinds, and I'm here today with fellow saxophonist Jeffrey Landman. How are you today, Jeffrey? Hey, Kristen. I've invited Jeffrey here to discuss some best practices for playing the saxophone, and we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about reed strength. So just to kick things off, what are your thoughts on reed strength in general? Well, it depends a lot on which size mouthpiece we're playing or what kind of mouthpiece. And there's many different makes of reeds out there and strengths, so it's important to, to find the right one for you. So for me, it's always about finding the right balance between sound and resistance. The tone you want, but also you're not working too hard to play. So I've deliberately chosen a really soft reed, a really hard reed, and a reed that's my normal strength. So to start with, I've got my normal saxophone, my normal setup here with my normal reed size, which is a Diderio Reserve 3.5. So I'm just going to play a little bit and you'll get a sense of what my sound is like normally. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> so now we're going to go to the number two. This is going to be way too soft for me. This is a number two Diderio Reserve. So that's, uh, that's way too soft for me. That's, like I said, a number two Diderio Reserve. You should notice a few things. The sound, number one, is a lot brighter. I have less control over the intonation, so my pitch is not as good. And then the resistance is, is really, it's too easy to play. And so what happens is when I really put a lot of air behind the mouthpiece, the reed seals up against it and there's some delay there. I'm sure you heard that. Yeah. So it takes a while for the reed to actually respond to the air because the, the reed's too light for the, the amount of air I'm putting through the mouthpiece. How would something ever be too easy? What ends up happening that, that causes that? So what it feels like to me is like as I'm putting air through the, the instrument, there's nothing uh, uh, to blow against. I'm just blowing and my air's gone. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So now I'm going to go to a reed that's way too hard for me, and the reed I've chosen is going to be a number four and a half Diderio Reserve. <laughs> so that was really hard. Yeah. It sounds different and it looks different. I, I can see your face turning red. It looked like it was really challenging. Yeah, and I'm sure you were able to notice that the sound is also um, has a lot of white noise in there. There's some air sounds and just some extraneous noise uh, going on. Uh, so it's harder to play and the tone's not as good. So this is an example of a read that's too hard for me. That made it really clear how important it is to, to really narrow in on the exact right strength for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, everyone's a little bit different, is built different. Would you say that a three and a half is pretty typical or would someone at a different point in their journey be playing a different strength? What are some of the factors that contribute to that comfort level. Sure, the experience of the player is going to contribute, so a younger player might be more comfortable on a lighter reed. Um, and also, what kind of mouthpiece and saxophone we're playing. Um, if we have a mouthpiece that has a wider o opening or facing, we might be playing a lighter reed, where if we're playing a mouthpiece that has a really closed facing, we might be on a stronger reed. So it sounds like the, the bottom line is that it's really important to experiment with different strength reeds across the spectrum. When you find a reed brand that you like the sound of... It's about finding the right balance between the right reed and the right mouthpiece. Hey, thanks so much for coming out, Jeffrey. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome.